This is an extra video uh, for section 5.1 and I've called it 5.1a and this is to do with oblique impacts with a fixed surface and just some of the content that is not covered in the examples um, but is covered in a couple of questions from the exercise and we we'll just want to go through how you would do those types of questions. So these will be questions where um, it's a vector uh, we've got things given as vectors and we will have the velocities before and after the collision of a uh, some sort of particle or ball or something but we'll have no information about the direction of the wall so i'm going to have a situation a bit like this now i've just made up where this wall is i have no idea it is but i do know the incoming velocity and the rebound velocity so we'll label those as u and we'll call that a i plus b j and we'll have this velocity here uh, v and uh, actually let's do that up here v and we'll call that c i plus d j now the key to answering a question like this um, to work out what the uh, velocities are perpendicular and parallel to this impact surface is to use the impulse and the dot product and I'll show you how we do that so first of all we need to work out what this impulse is here and we actually want that as a unit vector so I've put those two steps here we can find the impulse where well, we can do um, the mass times by this velocity minus the mass times by this velocity find the impulse and we want to turn it into a unit vector so the way that we do that is to divide the, the impulse by its length and that will give us uh, this here put a little hat on it to show that it's a unit vector so it's only one unit long now here's a clever bit if you do the dot product of this unit vector here of the impulse with this here with u it's going to give you a value called k and that value k is going to represent how many times longer this vector is compared to the unit vector so i'll just say that again so i'm going to do i dot u and i'm going to get a value so let's just run that down here i dot u that will give me a value so let's call that k and k is going to represent how many times longer this part of the velocity is this vector here is to i because these are parallel vectors here so this is just a longer version and what you should find is that when you find k you actually get a minus because you can see it's pointing in the other direction so we're going to write here that this vector here is k lots of this unit vector so the dot product is going to tell us what k is so we do the dot product of this vector with this one we get a number that tells us how many times longer this vector is compared to the unit vector i now if we do the same on the other side here and we do uh, the, the dot product of the unit vector with the vector v we're going to get a number let's call that p and that value p is going to tell you how many times longer this vector is here so this vector how many times longer this is compared to unit vector now we'd expect p to be positive because it's going in the same way as the unit vector so that means that this vector here that we've done in blue is going to be p lots of this unit vector so we just multiply the unit vector by this value p and we get p by doing the dot product of the unit vector and v so if you do the dot product of these two you get what to multiply i by to get this or the unit vector i if you do the dot product with these two it tells you what to multiply the unit vector i by to get this vector here so i've summarized that information here um, unit vector i of the impulse dotted with u gives you a number i've called it k k times by that unit vector gives you this green vector here and the same if you do unit vector and a dot product with v so dot products of these two that will give you a number and that number p you multiply by unit vector i 
and then it will give you this green vector or sorry this blue vector here now we can do this exactly the same thing with a unit vector parallel to the wall so let's say i found um, a unit vector going this way okay which is parallel to where the wall is and if i don't know where the wall is i can find uh, a unit vector which is perpendicular to i okay so this is going to be a vector perpendicular to i let's just do it like that because i've not got enough space to write perpendicular and once i've found this perpendicular vector here the one that's perpendicular to i if i do the dot product of this vector this perpendicular vector or parallel vector to the wall with v it gives me the multiple to find this vector here so i'll put that in so let's put another color here see this vector would be this vector here let's give it a name let's call it the vector k since that's the next one the alphabet so we'll call this vector so we'll just take this out and we'll call that vector k it's perpendicular to the impulse okay and it's going to be a unit vector so yeah the dot product of this with v is going to give me the multiple of this vector to find this vector here so i'll just write that out so yeah doing k dot v is going to give me a number that's the multiple and that's what i multiply the unit vector k by to find this vector here if i do the same in over here this one this light blue vector here i would do the dot product of k that unit vector parallel to the wall with u that's going to give me a number and that's the multiple of this unit vector k to find that blue vector okay so hopefully that sort of makes sense to you what we're going to do is we're going to do some examples so the key is finding these unit vectors multiplying by the uh, incoming or outgoing velocity to work out what these components of the velocities are that are perpendicular and parallel to the wall or surface that the um, particle or ball is bouncing off of so here we've got a small smooth sphere of mass m moving with uh, this velocity so there's our u so i'll write that down uh, u is equal to 5i minus 2j when it hits a smooth wall it rebounds from the wall with this velocity v equals 2i plus 2j so you can see there's no information about the wall the direction of the wall just the incoming and outgoing velocities the first thing you need to do in part a is to find a unit vector in the direction of the impulse received by the sphere okay so and we're going to be using this impulse uh, to work out what the components of the velocities are parallel and perpendicular to um, the actual surface or wall that it's bouncing off of so that's why it's asking us to work out impulse first so we know that impulse is going to be equal to mv minus mu so for this question that's going to be m because that's the mass uh, times by v now i prefer writing these as columns just find that easier to do like this so then five minus two so that will give me m and then in brackets two minus five to minus minus two so we can simplify that to minus three four so if we write that as i and j that's going to be minus three m i plus four m j now we need to turn this into a unit vector so we need to divide it by its length so we need to work out the size uh, or the length of this vector here so we can just use pythagoras to find a length so that's going to be the square root of minus 3m all squared plus uh, 4m all squared i suppose i should write 
I'm finding a length of i here. So that will be equal to the square root of 9m squared plus 16m squared, which is the square root of 25m squared, which is 5m. So that's the length of i. So we want to take this vector and divide it by its length. So that's going to be minus 3m. So I'll go back to columns again, 4m. And we're dividing it by 5m like this. So you can see that the m's are going to cancel out. And that will leave us with uh, minus 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. You can write this as columns as you like, if you like, or put the um, uh, the fifth outside the bracket doesn't really matter, but there we go. There's my unit vector for the impulse. Okay, we'll just highlight that before we move on to part B. So part B is asking us to find the coefficient of restitution between the sphere and the wall. Now, if we want to find the coefficient of restitution, we've got our, our wall going like this. And we've got this velocity coming in and this velocity coming out. We need to know this vector here, the green one going in, and this one here. And I know that my green one divided by, or sorry, my blue one divided by my green one is going to give me E. And how are we going to find what these vectors are? Well, we've got the unit vector I here. And if I do the dot product of this unit vector with u, I'll get the green one, or I'll get the multiple that I need to multiply this unit vector by to get this one. And if I do the same thing, the dot product of the unit vector of the impulse with v, I'll give me a number and I'll tell me what to multiply this by to get this outgoing vector here. So let's do that. So we'll start by finding this velocity here. So that's the component that's perpendicular to the wall um, by doing unit vector i dotted with u. Now that's going to be minus three fifths, four fifths dotted with u, which is five minus two. So that will give us minus three fifths times by five, which is minus three. And then uh, four fifths times by negative two, which is going to be minus eight fifths. And that gives me minus 23 over five. So this number represents what I need to multiply this unit vector by to get this vector here. Now notice that this value is negative, indicating that this vector is going in a different direction to the unit vector, which is what we would expect. So what we're going to have is minus 23 over 5 times by the vector, that unit vector, which is minus 3 fifths, 4 fifths. If we do that, 69 over 25i minus 92 over 25j. So now we need to do the same thing to find this vector here. So this vector represents this green one here. So now we do the unit vector i dotted with v, so that's still the minus 3 fifths, 4 fifths, like this, but we do the dot product with v, which is 2, 2. So when we do that, we'll get minus 3 fifths times by 2, which is minus 6 over 5, and then we'll get 4 fifths times by 2, which is going to be 8 over 5. 
and that leaves us 2 over 5. So remember, this is the multiple. I called it P in my previous working that I need to multiply the unit vector by to get this blue vector here. So I suppose I should put like a little blue arrow like this. So I now do two fifths times by uh, the unit vector I. So that's minus three fifths, four fifths. I'll get minus six over 25 I plus eight over 25 J. Now notice when we worked out the multiple, it was positive, indicating that this vector is going the same way as this unit vector, which is what we would expect. Now, these are our velocities here, the green one and the blue one. We want to find E. Now, actually, we can find E without actually having to work out these velocities. We can just use these multiples. So one was 23 or minus 23 over 5. And the other one was 2 over 5. Now, what is E? E is the ratio of the outgoing velocity divided by the incoming velocity. So we're not so much interested in what these values are for i and j. It's basically what's the link between them? What's the ratio between these two values? Well, the ratio between these two values, we know that the outgoing velocity is 2 fifths longer than the unit vector i. So I can just write two fifths here. Divided by the um, sort of multiple of this vector here, and not, not the minus part, but that's the direction, just the size of it, it's 23 over five. And if I do that division, I get two over 23. That is the value of E. So you can save yourself self some time actually by doing the dot product of the unit vector I with V divided by the dot product of the unit vector I dotted with U and that will give you E. So here's a little tip down here, a quick way of finding E without having to actually work out the velocities. One of my Heinz's top tips is by doing this. So unit vector i dotted with v divided by the unit vector i dotted with u, one number divided by another, and there we go, you've got your value of e, and we've saved ourselves a bit of time. So since that's such a top tip, such a great bit of information, I'm gonna highlight it in yellow. There we go to show that it's special. Save yourself a bit of time. Right, so we've got a small, smooth sphere of mass 2 kg, which is moving with velocity 2i plus 3j. So we'll just write that down, that u is equal to 2i plus 3j. When it hits a smooth wall, it rebounds with velocity v uh, 3i minus j. And what we need to do in part A is to find the magnitude and direction of the impulse received by the sphere. So our impulse, mv minus mu, I suppose for this question it might be easier just to do mv minus u. So the mass is 2, writing it as columns, v is 3 minus 1, and we need to subtract uh, 2, 3. So we end up with two lots of 3 minus 2, which is 1, minus 1 minus 3, which is minus 4. So that's 2i minus 8j. So that means that the magnitude of i, the size of i, using Pythagoras, is just going to be the square root of 2 squared plus minus 8 squared. So that's just going to be uh, 4 plus 64 square rooted. And the square root of 68 is 2 root 17. So there's the size or magnitude of our impulse. Oops, and that's going to be in Newton seconds. 
we want to find the direction of the impulse. Now the direction of the impulse is basically this uh, 2i minus 8j. But let's write it as a unit vector and we can say that it's parallel parallel to the unit vector of the impulse. OK, so that's just an eye with a little hat on it. So what we will do, we will take the vector 2 minus 8, 2 minus 8, and we'll divide it by its length, which is 2 root 17. And if we simplify it, we'll get um, 1 over root 17i minus, I think it's going to be 4 over root 17j. OK, so it's going to be parallel to that vector. Now, I suppose you could put any uh, vector which is parallel to this going to be in that direction. But that unit vector is going to be useful for the next part. So even if you didn't do it in part A, you'd need a unit vector for part B because it says find the coefficient of restitution between the sphere and the wall. Now to find that, we want to find out what's the ratio of the length of the outgoing velocity, which is going to be the unit vector I dotted with V um, and the length of the uh, income velocity, which is going to be the unit vector i dotted with u. OK, so we can just work out those two values, divide one by the other. So we'll start with unit vector i dotted with u and see what that gives us. So that will be um, now, I think just to make things a little bit easier to look out, for the unit vector i, I'm going to put the 1 over root 17 outside. And then just inside, I just need to write 1 minus 4 and dot that with u, which is 2, 3. It's just easier to write it than to write like uh, fractions inside the brackets like this. Now, the advantage of that is when we come to work out what this is, we just need, know it's going to be something over root 17. And that's going to be 1 times by 2, which is 2, plus minus 4 times by 3. So it's basically 2 minus 12, so it gives us minus 10. It's negative, which is what we'd expect, because you'd expect that incoming velocity to be in the opposite direction to the impulse. And then we're going to do the same thing here and work out the unit vector i dotted with v. So we actually don't need to work out what the vectors are for these velocities, just the numbers. Now we might need that for part C or another part, but we're going to minimize the amount of work we need to do. So 1 over root 17, 1 minus 4, dotted with v, which is going to be 3 minus 1. So again, we know it's going to be something over root 17, and it's going to be 1 times by 3, uh, plus minus 4 times by minus 1. So that's going to be 7 over root 17. So E is going to be equal to these sizes. So we, we dispense with a negative because that tells us a direction. We're not interested in a direction. So at the um, top of my fraction, and I've realized these need to be the other way around. So it should be v at the top and u at the bottom. So we'll just swap our arrows around, call that just in time. So that one goes with that one, that one goes with that one there. So at the top, we're going to have 7 over root 17. And I want to divide that by 10 over root 17. And that just leaves 7 over 10. So I've just caught myself in time uh, and sort of got those just the white way around at the end. Right, so let's highlight that. 
So 7 over 10. I probably would have seen it was wrong if I put 10 over 7 at the end. I knew something was, was incorrect. So don't make the same mistake as me. I dot V at the top, I dot U at the bottom. And in part C, what we need to do is to work out the kinetic energy lost by the sphere in the collision. OK, so to do this, we're going to start by working out the speeds of uh, U and V. All right, so the speed U, so this is going to be before the collision. Now we know that it's going to be a multiple of the unit vector. And that unit vector we've got written somewhere. Here we go. So it's 1 over root 17 times by 1 4. So there's the unit vector um, here times by the multiple. And this multiple is going to be 10 over 17. So 10 over root 17. So we don't need the minus because we're not interested in the direction, just the size. So this will become 10 over 17, uh, 1 minus 4, like that. If you want to find the size of that, well, it's going to be that many lots of the size of this. So that's going to be the square root of 1 squared. Uh, plus minus 4 squared, which is root 17. So basically we've got 10 over 17 lots of root 17. So that is U. And we're going to find the speed V. So again, the unit vector of the impulse multiplied by that multiple, which we get from the dot product, and that multiple for v is 7 over root 17 so 7 over root 17 that becomes 7 over 17 1 minus 4 and that will be 7 over 17 root 17 so now we can work out our loss in kinetic energy loss in ke so that's going to be half m, which is 2 times by v squared. So that's 7 over root 17, sorry, 7 over 17 times by root 17 squared minus half m2 times by uh, u squared. So 10 over 17 root 17. And if we work that out, we get three. So three joules have of uh, energy have been lost. So I'll just put my squared here because we're squaring it. 